Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. Today we are going to talk about the perfect system, which is a system that includes three tenses, the perfect, the pluperfect and the future perfect. This is very important to study because you will find the perfect and the pluperfect a lot of times, especially in historical narrations. The future perfect is rarer, but you will find it as well. So, are you ready? That's perfect! Okay, sorry. That was really bad. So, let us, let us have a look at the characteristics of the perfect system. So, as I said before, the perfect system is a system which includes three tenses. The perfect, the pluperfect, and the future perfect. So, do we have these tenses in, in English? Yes, we do, even though they have another name, because they correspond to the following tenses. So the perfect in Latin, in English, is the past simple, which is used, it is used in both languages to define a completed action. So an action that, is, uh, that happens in the past, but it is completed and doesn't have connections with the present. An example is, yesterday I went for a run. Then we have the pluperfect, which is basically the past perfect in English. And it is used to say that, in the past, one action comes before the other. For example, in this sentence, Catalina was arrested because he had committed a crime. Of course, the action of committing a crime comes before the fact of being arrested. As for, as for the future perfect, it has the same name in English too. It's called future perfect. And uh, it's talking about two actions taking place one after the other, but this time in the future. So, if I say, I will have completed my homework by the time he comes, it means that the first action comes before the second. So, first I complete my homework and then my friend comes. So, an important concept that we have to learn for the perfect system is that we don't have to use the present stem anymore. But in order to form all the tenses, we have to use the perfect stem. So, so far we have studied that in order to form the tenses of the present system, you need to use the present stem, which is the stem provided by the first principal part of a verb. For example, if I take the verb amare, the principal parts are amo, amare, amavi, amatus. So, the present stem is given by the first principal part. And if you take the stem am, you can form every voice of the present, of the imperfect, and of the future. But for the perfect system, however, you will have to use the perfect stem. And the perfect stem is exactly the third principal part. Uh, without the ending, of course. So, if I have amo, amare, amavi, amatus, the third principal part uh, that is to say, the perfect stem, comes from amavi. Therefore, our stem, if we remove the ending, will be amav. And with the stem amav, we can create every form of the perfect system. Something that is a little trickier about the perfect system is actually learning the perfect stem, because some of them uh, have to be memorized, since in some verbs they are very different from the present stem. And that is why it is important to study vocab and to learn the principal parts of a verb. For example, here I put an example of a verb that we're going to study um, in the next class, ferro, ferre, tuli, latus. So this verb is kind of irregular, and as you can see, the present stem fer is pretty different from the perfect stem lat. And so this is why it's important to memorize them. Uh, we have this thing in English too. For example, if we take the verb to go, which is the present, of course, if you want to make the present simple, you have went. And so you can see that the stem changes. Let us look at the endings of the perfect stem. So good news is that you don't have to study a lot of new endings. There is just this one set of personal endings that you have to study ex novo. So the perfect stem has a new set of endings. However, you will, you will use these endings only for the perfect tense, but not for the pluperfect or for the future perfect, because pluperfect and future perfect are formed in another way. 
Good news is that the endings of the perfect system are the same for all the conjugations. And so you will not have the trouble to uh, recognize the right conjugation, recognize the right theme vowel, because the perfect system is equal for all the, all the conjugations. So I'm going to read the perfect endings. I isti it, imus istis erunt. Sometimes you can also have this archaic ending ere, but you find it always in poetry, so be aware that it exists, uh, but if, if, even if you don't know that, it's okay. So, let us take the verb amare and let's conjugate the verb. Let us start with the perfect. So, let us conjugate the perfect of amo, amare, amavi, amatus. So, our stem is going to be the third principal part, so amavi. I'm going to read all the forms. Amavi, amavisti, amavit. Amavimus, amavistis, amaverunt. As you can see, the translation is I loved, you love, she, he, she, it loved, we loved, you all loved, they loved. So it's a normal, uh, simple past. As you can see, uh, the stem is the thing that never changes and they just need to change the personal endings. I isti it, i musisti zerunt. The, the mechanism of formation of the pluperfect is a little different. So the starting point is always the perfect stem. So we need the perfect stem. We need to attach to the perfect stem an infix era. And then we need the personal endings of the present system. I'm going to read all the forms. Amaveram, amaveras, amaverat. Amaveramus, amaveratis, amaverant. As for the translation, I had loved, you had loved, he, she, it had loved, we had loved, you all had loved, they had loved. As you can see, the formation it is not hard. The starting point is always our stem, amav, that will never change. We attach to it the infix era, and then we use the personal endings of the present system, mst mustis nt. Now, I will teach you a trick in order to learn the pluperfect and to remember it uh, in a more effective way. Because the endings of the pluperfect are actually the same, they perf perfectly correspond to the imperfect of the verb sum, to be. As you can see, the endings are exactly the same. Eram eras erat, eramus eratis erant. So, a trick is that if you recognize that the endings are the same of the imperfect of the verb to be, uh, that is going to be a pluperfect, of course. So if you know the imperfect of sum, you also know the pluperfect. So you don't have to memorize other things. A similar things can be said for the future perfect. So the future perfect has a similar uh, mechanism of formation. So we always start from our perfect stem, amav, we add the infix eri, and we use uh, the personal endings of the present system. I am going to read the forms. Amavero, amaveris, amaverit, avamerivus, amaveritis, amaverint. As for the translation, I will have loved, you will have loved, he, she, it will have loved, we will have loved, you all will have loved, they will have loved. As you can see in English, uh, it is much simpler because you don't have the personal endings, uh, and so it, it's a lot easier than in Latin. As we can see uh, the formation of the word, we have our stem amav, which never changes. We have the uh, infix eri, which is the same for all the forms apart from the first person singular. But as we can see, this amavero uh, actually comes from a previous form, Amaverio, and then the E and the O add a sort of contraction into a long O. So uh, originally you have the eri infix even for the first person singular. So you take the stem amav, you put eri, and then you add the personal endings of the present. We have another trick to learn the future perfect more effectively, which is that 
almost all the forms of the endings of the future perfect correspond to the future simple of sum, to be. So, as you can see, uh, in the future of the verb sum, we have ero eris erit, erimus eritis erunt, e for the future perfect of amare, we have ero eris erit, erimus eritis erint. They are basically the same. The only exception is the ending of the third person plural, because for the future perfect is erint, while for the future simple of sum is erunt. And so this difference needs to be memorized. But this is the only exception. So, as you can see, the perfect system is not that hard, because it's the same for every conjugation. And there are also many tricks in order, to, uh, in order for it to be easier to be memorized. So, I don't think it is going to be too difficult for you to remember. Okay, that was all I had to say. Thank you for listening, and I will see you in class.